What if there were a food source that thrived in warm climates and could supplement other resource-intensive protein sources? In case you haven't heard the buzz about entomophagy, the practice of eating insects, I am going to highlight its huge potential to contribute to sustainable, nutritious diets around the world. I'll also make the case for why agricultural development practitioners should be paying more attention to edible insects. First, for some perspective. Insects are awesome in the true sense of the word. There are over 1 million described species, which is more than half of all living organisms on the planet. Only about 5,000 are considered harmful to crops, livestock, or humans. Humans have been taking advantage of insect products and services for millennia. We employ insects for food and fabric dyes, honey, shellac, silk, and importantly, we leverage their penchant for ecosystem services in agriculture like pollination and natural pest control. Knowing how abundant insects are, it shouldn't come as a surprise that eating insects is incredibly common. Two billion people consume insects as a regular part of their diet, and over 1,900 edible species have been documented. Entomophagy is more common in the tropics, where insect populations tend to be larger and more reliable. Most edible insects are harvested from the wild, or are semi-cultivated by facilitating the conditions for their breeding. However, farming insects is booming as a business. This cricket farm in Thailand is feeding a huge national appetite for insects. Here's just one example of a very popular edible insect. In southern Africa, 9.5 billion Mopani caterpillars are harvested every year for human consumption. They are collected by hand, primarily by women and children, then degutted boiled, and sun-dried. They contain tons of protein, healthy fats, and calcium, and are so popular that they're being over-harvested. Eating insects is not popular in most Western cultures, but let's face it, eating a grasshopper isn't any weirder than eating a wild-harvested morel mushroom, or my personal favorite, a soft-shell crab. And frankly, we all consume allowable insect fragments in grains and other foods as much as one kilogram of stealth insect fragments per person per year. I think it's time to embrace insects as food. But why should we as agricultural development practitioners have our antennae up about entomophagy? Well, edible insects hit on many of the core elements that we typically integrate into our programming, including nutrition, environmental management, and livelihoods. First, edible insects are highly nutritious. The nutrient content varies, but we're looking at a food that is rich in protein, fatty acids, fiber, and valuable minerals. Most insects boast an equal or higher iron content than beef, which poises them to combat iron deficiency anemia. In some households, insects can provide 15 to 40 percent of protein intake at certain times of year. The nutritional value of termites is so high that in Uganda and Zambia they are fed to undernourished children. No one can deny that insects provide a significant nutritional boost for many families globally. Next, there are some big environmental benefits to using insects as food. Insects are cold-blooded, and therefore they are really great at converting what they eat into body mass. Farmed crickets only need one-twelfth as much feed as cattle, and half as much as pigs and broiler chickens. Insects produce significantly lower greenhouse gas and ammonia emissions than conventional livestock. They need much less water and less arable land to produce equivalent amounts of food, pound for pound, compared with beef, chicken, or pork. And this one is particularly interesting. Many insects can be grown on organic side streams such as food waste, manure, pig slurry, and compost. Envision how this completes the circle. Soldier flies are reared on animal waste, and those fly larvae are then fed back to animals. And on that note, insects have huge potential as animal feed, not just human food. Insects are already natural food sources for many fish and poultry. They may help communities raise more livestock and consume more animal source foods. Now, on to supporting sustainable livelihoods. For insect harvesters, their catch can be an essential source of income for affording school fees and household items. In one Lao village, 23% of household income is from the sale of 21 different species of edible insects. 
markets for edible insects are expanding, both locally and internationally. As such, some subsistence producers are turning commercial. Harvesting or rearing insects is a low-tech, low-capital investment, which makes it an easier entry for women and young people. And the demand is real and growing. In Uganda, a kilogram of grasshoppers is more expensive than a kilogram of beef. One saleswoman said that customers still buy her grasshoppers even though prices have doubled. They are a delicacy, enjoyed when they are in season during the holidays. So as I've shown you, eating insects is more common than many people realize, and edible insects have a potentially large role to play in terms of supporting nutrition, livelihoods, and environmental goals in the developing world. Then, what are some action steps we can take? First, simply recognize that entomophagy is happening in the communities we serve. Next, be careful not to accidentally harm insect-based livelihoods when implementing programs. For example, by converting a field that has traditionally been used for insect harvesting into something else. Consider whether and how dietary diversity or other nutrition-related surveys should track insect consumption, especially in countries where it is prevalent. When looking to fund new innovations, don't discount insect rearing or harvesting technologies. Lastly, help expand the conversation about entomophagy. As we all know, it's not just the caterpillar in the beloved children's book that's hungry. Almost 800 million people in the world don't have enough to eat. By keeping the door open to edible insects, we'll have more tools to build a sustainable food system for the next generation.